Coach Bryant Vincent is with us now on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline, the UAB interim head coach. Welcome in, Coach. Hope you're doing well today. Doing great, guys. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, we appreciate you coming on. Um, obviously, you were aware of this news of Coach Clark before any of us were. What was your reaction when Coach came to you and said, look, I'm not going to be able to do this, and I, I want you to take the helm of the program? Well, obviously, there was a lot of emotions. And, you know, and I've known Coach for a long time right at 20 years and his back has, has been hurting him for years. You know, it happened back in 1983. So this is something that he's dealt with for years and he's really just fought through it. And, and there were times probably about two years ago, man, it just, he struggled and struggled, but he's tough. He's fought through, fought through. And then when it actually, when he actually came to me, it was kind of a, you know, it was a surreal moment. And is this really happening? You know, is, is this really the time? And there's never a, a, a good time but I think it really in the month of June, it, it just got worse and it got worse. And then when we had our seven on seven tournament, we had two seven on seven tournaments back to back, June the 23rd and 24th, and had 16 teams in each tournament. And he was he just wasn't able to come out there. And that's when I knew it was real and this was serious. Well, it's a great opportunity for you. I know it's got to be bittersweet. Uh, how involved, if at all, will he be, you know, moving forward, at least for the first couple of months during this transition? Well, you know, Coach, for, for years, we meet about every morning in his office at 6 a.m. And then we meet again at lunch. And then we would meet again after practice or at the end of the day. And him and I, my office is right next to his office. And we've worked hand in hand, you know, for years. And he's been a mentor. He's been a great friend, um, a great man. And so I don't really see, you know, I still I don't see this thing cutting off. I just don't. You know, I talked to Coach this morning at 6 a.m. again. You know, he's a routine guy. I'm a routine guy. He loves UAB. He's a Birmingham man. UAB, uh, obviously, football in the town and university means a lot to him. So he's a guy that I'm going to lean on, you know, not only as a friend, but also, you know, a as a coach. Does the interim tag bother you? Do you wish they'd have said, hey, you're the head coach? Doesn't bother me at all. I've been an underdog my whole life. Everything I've had to earn, everything I've worked to and got to, I've had to earn every bit of it. So, the interim tag, it actually motivates me, guys. You know, so Coach Clark and I, we followed almost similar paths. We were both high school coaches in this state. We cut our teeth on it throughout our career. Coach Clark, you know, when he was the head coach at Prattville, I was the head coach at Greenville. <laughs> you know, South Alabama, 45 minutes down the road, I was the scout coach in Alabama-Mississippi All-Star game. When he went to South Alabama, I was the head coach at Spanish Fort. He moved to Spanish Fort for his son Jacob to play for me. And then when I went to South, Coach Clark was our defensive coordinator at South Alabama. So we followed very similar paths, uh, remained very close friends throughout our careers. And, you know, I, to be honest, to, to answer your question a little bit more directly, I'm excited about the interim tag. It's just another challenge. It's another opportunity to, to prove, you know, what we can accomplish and what we can get done. I'll save my Bates turkey questions for later on, knowing you, <laughs> you're from that, that part of the interstate down there. Uh, so when you talk with Mark Ingram, though, uh, the AD, um, you've got a heck of a team this year. We've seen guys do what you're about to do, like a Dabo Sweeney. Would that be a scenario? Did, did he give you any indication that, Coach, if it goes well this year, you're going to be uh, one guy I consider strongly. I'd love to keep this in the family. Did you all have that type of conversation? We had a conversation. It was that Saturday. The next day, I went to his office that Saturday. And, and Mark, he's very upfront with me, very honest with me. He told me, he said, Brian, he said, look, you're a great candidate. You're going to be a, a great candidate for this job. He goes, but I'm going to open a national search. And, I, and I'm as his job as an athletic director is to pick the number one, who he feels is the best guy for this job. And I said, Mark, I understand it. I just appreciate the opportunity to lead this team and to show this town and, and really – the university in Birmingham and our, and and the UAB family, what I'm capable of doing as a leader of this football team. Brian Vincent is with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. He's the interim head coach of the UAB Blazers right now. And look, coach, when, when I rent a house down at the beach, I hate to go in and rearrange the furniture. They got it the way they want it. You've been part of this program. I mean, are there things you 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 look at and change? Do you try to keep it as much like it has been over the last few years? It's been very successful, obviously. How do you deal with that? Well, I mean, the foundation's been set. Coach Clark has laid an unbelievable foundation. I was here in 2014. I was Coach Clark's first 
offensive coordinator and quarterback coach when we came in and this place was broken. You know, it, it was broken. The morale, the culture, the facilities, you name it, it, it was broken. So I worked with him back then hand in hand, and we went six and six that first year. And I want to take you back to 2014 for a minute because, you know, all this correlates. And there was smoke. There was a lot of smoke around week six, week seven, about shutting the program down. And, and we kept that team together and we fought for Birmingham. We fought for each other and we finished six and six and we're bowl eligible, even though we didn't get to go play in that bowl. So then it shuts down. And then we come back in 2017, you know, you practice 17. I come back in 18 and 18, we win a championship. 19, we win the West. 20, we win the West. We win the championship. We've won the first bowl game here, then 21. So now I look at it, it's very similar. I'm the interim head coach. The foundation has been set. The standard has been set. Now we're going to elevate the standard. That's my goal is to elevate the standard and take it to a different level. And the way I look at it is we're fighting for Birmingham. We're fighting for these players and this team to put the best possible team out there and to go win another Conference USA championship. Well, you know, I would assume the focus of this offense will be Dwayne McBride coming off that great season last year. But now you have the luxury of depth at quarterback. And I guess that's going to be a big decision for you. It hasn't, you know, we've never had this depth, this true depth at quarterback, and that's a great point. You know, Dylan, his last year of being a full-time starter, you know, was really, he got his first start, I guess it was Tulane, and that was nine games, and he had a great year. And then we were able to get Jacob Zeno in here mid-year from Baylor, who I feel is is got a chance to be a special player too. And then you've got Bryson Lucero in the quarterback room who started five games here and has won three and two as a starter and won some big games for us. So this is the deepest, this is the best the quarterback room has been. You know, you go to the running back and, and Debo, I feel like he's the premier back in this league. I think he's one of the top backs in the country. Um, there's a guy right behind him now, Jermaine Brown. I recruited Skull out of St. <laughs> Louis, Mobile. We were his only Division One offer. And I, I recruited him for six months. There's something about him. He showed up at 5'9", 152 pounds. He is right at 186, 87 pounds. And I promise you, Jermaine Brown is going to hit the scene like he's never hit it this year. There's no doubt about it. So he's a guy I'm excited about. A.J. Gates at the running back position from Mount Brook, that's a walk-on that I'm really excited about that kind of moved his way into number three. And then you got a guy named Lee Witherspoon who's, who transferred last year from Mississippi State. He broke his ankle in the third scrimmage before the season last year, he's a guy that nobody's really heard a lot about. So I think our running back room is the best it's ever been. And our quarterback room is the best it's ever been. Our receiver room is, is the best it's ever been. And we've had some really good ones here. Um, you've got to poke your head into go that. To our line. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. It was, we lost a connection with you a little bit. And I thought you just stopped. My apologies. You've got to poke your head into that defensive room every now and then. That's one of the best defenses uh, in America, top 20 uh, total defense last year. Uh, and you got all those guys back, it looks like, on paper-wise. As a, as a new coach, uh, offensive guy, defensive guy, do you, do you now say, I've got to spend a little bit more time at the other end of the field? Have you thought about managing that aspect of being a head coach now? Absolutely. You know, and, and to me, the thing I've been, I've been a head coach in high school for five years, won a state championship, turned two programs around. But to me, I'm a relationship guy. If you ask our players, who is who is Brian Vincent, they're going to tell you a relationship guy. So I have great relationships with all the players on this team because it's about kids. This thing, it ain't about Brian Vincent. It ain't about me. It's about UAB. It's about Birmingham, and it's about our players. And I'm a relationship guy. So, my, you know, yeah, we're chasing championships every day here, but we're also trying to turn these guys into great men. And, and my philosophy is if you have a great man, you have a chance to be a great player. And it's got to go hand in hand. And everything we do off the field bleeds right onto the field. And so, yeah, you know, I've, I've spent the last two days going on three days meeting with every one of our defensive players individually because we do have some new additions. And I want them to know exactly who I am, the guys that don't know. We've learned over the years Bill Clark's a hell of a coach. We also learned his celebratory meal after a game was a whopper <laughs> from Burger King. Do you have a more uh, uh, refined palate wow. than Coach Clark, or uh, are, are you a Burger King guy too? 
Well, you know, I was a Burger King guy a couple times because I was with Coach Clark when we went to Burger King. <laughs> so, uh, you know, everybody's got their different deals, but I, I'm really I'm – a, I'm a grilled chicken guy after a game or a pizza guy. It's something about football in the fall and pizza. Pizza Hut pizza, man. There's just something about it. So I'm a pizza guy and, and, and just really a good looking guy. Uh, All right. He is Coach Brian Benson, basically two months away from his debut on that Thursday night against Alabama AM at Progressive Stadium. Coach, best of luck. We appreciate the time. I appreciate you guys and everything you guys do for us. Thanks again, guys. You bet. Take care. That is Coach Brian Vincent, the interim coach of UAB, with us on the Johnston RV Center.com hotline. <laughs> 